Hey everybody, it's Jersey Gamer 9000 here. Welcome back to more Super Mario Galaxy. In this episode, we're going to head inside here, which is the library. And that's pretty much all we're going to do in this episode. Alright, so let's go inside and let's see what's going on inside the library. Here we go. Chapter 1, The Celestial Duo Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child. Who has been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but saw nothing. Hours turned into days, and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, if we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then, she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother, else... ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusted spaceship, and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial mother began. Chapter 2, Star Bits Days passed with no sight of the comet, or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended as far as the eye could see. If I'd known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials, telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot-flavored tea, but... I forgot to bring water! At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter, and the girl began to pout. As long as I have Starbitch, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh, and the girl couldn't help but to join in. Alright, maybe just a nibble. Leaning out as far as... Leaving far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bridge with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bridge tasted like honey. Chapter 3 The Comet A beam of light peered through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake, and shouted excitedly, We have to get on that comet! The pair descended on the comet, and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. LOOK! Peering down... On the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Fine, star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I bet there's water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued to search for the Luma's mother. Chapter 4 The Dream One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother's retreating back. Without turning, the mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm going. To, I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you. I like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. 
What about when it rains? And I can't see the sun or the moon. Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama, wah! The pair traveled through the starry skies, and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Not now, Luma. The rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5. Home. The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there, the girl said brusquely to herself. We'll just... and we'll put the gate here! Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she'd been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's still worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only thing buried in the ice. They were tools and furniture unlike they had ever, ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? But for library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said, wistfully. In indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. At night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6 Friends Then one day, the girl sat sipping tea. A tiny apricot colored planet appeared in the horizon. From the planet, another Luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas cheerfully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot Luma parried back. My mama! My mama! My mama! My mama! The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out of the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama! My mama! The sight of all the shadowing Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Lumas just stared blankly as he doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new, the new house. Chapter 7 The Telescope After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange, so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope. And the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers that seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill 
on bright and windy days. And... I wanna go home. I wanna go home right now. The girl, the girl burst into tears, and the Loomers didn't know what to do. I wanna go home. I wanna go back to my house on by the hill. I wanna see my mother. The girl was shouted now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I know all along that she wasn't out there in the sky because... Because... She was sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Chapter 8. The Wish. Though usually quite cheery, the day the girl became sad again, Luma drew close and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama because she's a part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love Starbucks because they remind me of my mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face. But it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet and a store on comet and carry you all on this journey. With that, Luma trailing bands of white soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kablam! The ground shook and a bright light poured out of the crater that the Luma had created. A band of light twisted together to form a comet tail, and then Luma emerged reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes, but how, she kept asking. Our destiny as Lumas is to transform into different things, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we can become all those things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All the Lumas together said, no more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in a whisper. And she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, Starbridge no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final chapter, Family. With its many Lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the Lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcome party for the new Luma, for a new Luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, Alright everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sparkles with star bits. Then it will be a star cake. The Lumas suddenly began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the Lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now, and I will stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that's what makes a mother happiest. That night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home every once every hundred years to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. The comet carrying the Lumos and the girl continues on its journey to this very day. With more family members in tow than can be counted, it's said that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every hundred years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky. The End That's all. And that's all, the, my story is finished. Alright, and that's pretty much what the library is about, everybody. So this is Jersey Gamer 9000 saying so long, everybody. And I'll see you next time when we continue more missions of Super Mario Galaxy.